Uh, next, let us invite Mr. Victor Kwong, General Manager, Corporate Sustainability of the Hong Kong Gas, uh, Hong Kong China Gas Company Limited, to give a speech on the renewable energy initiatives from Town Gas. He is the chairman of the Town Gas Environmental Working Committee. He is also the director of the Business Environmental Council, president of the Hong Kong Federation of Corp Occupational Safety and Health Association, etc. He has more than 35 years of experience in the areas of occupational health and safety, corporate sustainability, environmental protection, fire protection, and crisis management. Please put your hands for, together for Victor, please. Yes. Uh, good morning. Thank you for the invitation from uh, Green Council, uh, especially from Phoenix. Our, uh, well, our past colleague. So first thing is about well, is a little bit strange to invite town guests to this uh, forum. Is about renewable energy. So when you look at our uh, Chinese name, Wei Hei, it's called well. English name is still okay, but the Chinese <laughs> name implies something dirty. So actually, we are thinking about whether we should change the name to, well, say, to City Gas or something like that. But our brand name is, well, causes billions of dollars, you know. <laughs> so that's why, well, we still fix on. Well, when, when you come to Hong Kong, when you talk to people, Wui Hei or Yin Hei, the, the, the people who don't know what is, you're talking about Yin Hei. So we still stick on this particular name. And it is a little bit introduction of our corporate profile. So we actually we start in uh, well, we are the oldest utility in Hong Kong. We start in 1862. Start from well 24 kilometer of gas pipeline in the central, and we have about 500 sweet land, just limited to this this one. And actually nowadays you can still find this kind of sweet land in Hong Kong. There's about 15 sweet land at this moment at, in Hong Kong. So Hong Kong is, uh, well, we, we, we then expand our business to heating or cooking now. They, well, I think most of our people in Hong Kong using time gas for, for this particular purpose. But Hong Kong is a very small space, you know. We have, uh, at this moment, we have three, uh, seven million people in Hong Kong. So that's why in the 1990s, we, well, we, we need to expand our, our business. So at this moment, we have uh, actually three major uh, streams. One is Hong Kong business. And in Hong Kong, we have a, uh, at this moment, we have about 1.9 million customers in Hong Kong. So another business is uh, mainland business. Nowadays, we have about uh, 27 million customers in mainland China. Actually, we are one of the largest gas, gas group in mainland China. So, um, and, and another is what we call the new energy business. We understand that town gas is, well, say, just like the electricity in power company in Hong Kong. We still use natural gas as our power source. Actually, for, for all our uh, 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 city gas company in, in mainland China, they are, well, we are actually supplying natural gas. So, we understand that for the climate change issue, we need to convert to more renewable, uh, to renewable energy, etc. So we aspire to be the greenest Hong Kong-based company. So this is our mission for this particular movement. So this is our coverage in main, uh, in Hong, both in Hong Kong and in mainland China. At this moment, we have about 255 projects in mainland China covering about uh, 26 provinces. And half of them is city gas company and other from that, we have, uh, well, say, uh, new energy business, telecommunication, water business, et cetera, et cetera. So we understand that climate change is important for the utility companies. Actually, for all the, well, the business organization they are talking about, climate change is the largest challenge of our time. So when, actually, when we look at the uh, uh, Hurricane Sandy back in 2012. At this moment, well, we are looking at this particular is the, well, the flooding of the subway in New York and also about two million of customers in, in New York loss of their power supply and about 300,000 of guest users also lost a, 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 a suspension of power supply, etc. So after the 
Hurricane Sandy, we understand that climate change is a big issue, especially for the utility in Hong Kong. So that after that, we have carried out a detailed risk assessment to, to assess in case of uh, climate change, super typhoon, storm surge, etc. What is the possible impact to our business operation? We will lose our supplies to our customer, etc. And recently, we carried another project. It's what we call the TCFD. It's, a, a, it's about the investor. We need to know whether if we invest on time gas, whether well, for the climate change, how we are going to tackle on this. So this is a we are we are launching a partnership project with, with business and environment council, and the, the this project is still undergoing. So you may think that utility is more well say uh, 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 well prepared for climate change, like the Hong Kong electric or power plant or 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 or, or town gas, etc. But actually, utility may still be hit by the climate change. Let's like just say, for example, this year, well, if you, you live in Hong Kong, you may understand that for this year, the average temperature is rise by 0.8%. So if the temperature is uh, a little bit higher than usual, how about the co gas consumption? It dropped by 5%. So if you look at uh, our recent stock price, so you know, the time gas has dropped a lot. So how about in other companies? Say this one is the, what we call the first climate change banquet. It's happening at this particular moment in California. It is what we call the Pacific Gas and Yachts uh, Company. It's unlike Hong Kong because they provide both electricity to about 5.4 million customers in California and about 4.3 gas cups customers. Last year, we understand that there's a very huge uh, Wi-Fi in California. That led to what we call in, they call it, what we call the November campfire. <coughs> 86 people were killed and burned about 14,000 houses. And then they got the potential uh, 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 claim for the bankruptcy is about uh, what we call the 30 billion US dollar. So they they actually filed the bankruptcy. The, the purpose is because of climate change. Well, is there's an extreme drought and hot weather in California, and that to well that they just sparked from the the electric poles that's captured by the campaigner. And that may be the ignition source for the uh, campfire. That's why they got the, uh, the legal shoot for this. So recently, you'll understand that in the past two uh, weeks, so also, well, there's also a very large Wi-Fi in California that's happening at this particular moment. So apart from that, you, you un oh, sorry, this. So that's happened in Taiwan, apart from well, draft also, well, there may be, well, heavy rainfall. So this is a limit case that happened. It's lucky that no one was died in this particular incident. So about mainland China, actually in uh, August this year, there is a very serious super typhoon happened in mainland China. It's because uh, we have a lot of business in mainland China. So about one tenth of the population in uh, people in mainland China of, was affected, and about fifty six people died for this particular incident. And also, well, the loss is uh, fifty four billion. So this is well, the most serious uh, typhoon damage in the China in the China history. So when we back to Hong Kong, luckily this year we don't have any super typhoon. But you remember in September last year, we have the well, super typhoon Manco. So if you work in this particular office building in Hong Kong, you'll understand that when you finish your work and when you come back next day, all the thing, all your belongings will be just gone off. So there's a lot of damage. So how about uh, time gas? We, uh, we still have some particular damage uh, where well, we can see here, but 
we are actually well prepared for this type of super typhoon. We have uh, uh, organized some drill and also some simulation, etc. Fortunately, that there is no one ga single gas leakage on this. But according to the recent uh, 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 report from the Hong Kong observers, that they are estimating that every year there will be similar kind of super typhoon that is going to happen in Hong Kong. So what is the loss, estimated loss for this particular is four billion. It's a lot of money. It will be happen every every year. So that's why, well, for our company, we are trying to, well, divert from the fossil fuel business going to uh, some renewable business. So when you want to have some project, you need money. That, you know? So actually for time gas, we are the, two years ago, we are the first energy utility in Hong Kong to issue the green bond. Well, when we got the money, what was, well, where are we going to invest? So we invest in four ways to energy projects. So I'm going to share with you a little bit later. But it's actually a milestone for Tang Gas. And also we want to support Hong Kong to be the green financial center. So about the fund is uh, in 2017, we have issued a, a, a green bond. It's, a, a, it's about a six hundred million Hong Kong dollar and two billion yen. So we got a very strong response from the investor. So and apart from that, well, we have issued a big bond and we need to some verification to ensure the investor that we put the money actually into this green project. So first, this year we are the first company in, in Hong Kong get the Hong Kong QAA green finance certification scheme. So it's about uh, a, a history for our, about uh, uh, clean gas production. So actually, we in the 70s, we convert from coal, heavy fuel oil to clean, uh, uh, high quality lava. This moment, in uh, 1990, we start the first project. We use the landfill gas from Xunwan landfill site. So this is a pilot project for us. And at this moment, it's more than 20 years. So there is still certain amounts of land gas coming out from this particular site. In 2006, we start to introduce a natural gas, actually it's a liquid uh, LNG from Australia back to Samjian and then ship it. And, and we have a pair of pipeline coming to back to Hong Kong. And 2007, we had another project is the land, another uh, strategic land, uh, uh, landfill site in Hong Kong. We captured the landfill gas and it sent back to, 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 to our gas production plant. Then I will uh, well explain a little bit uh, detail later. And two, oh, uh, 2017, we have another project is in Zhang Guanou, the same project. Uh, we have another project. And then we are also discussing the possibility to make use of the on organic food waste, the biogas from the organic food waste, etc. So at this moment, uh, for, for time gas, about 2% of our energy input is from this kind of what we call uh, landfill gas and a uh, kind of renewable energy. So we are talking at about 5% of our energy input is from the, from the, uh, land, from the landfill gas. So this is our target. And, uh, uh, according to at this moment, uh, when you compare the carbon in, in units of tank gas, we drop by uh, 26%. And we have a target that next year, we are going to have a drop by a target of uh, 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 about 30% reduction of carbon emission. So at this moment, we are uh, planning for our next targets in 2030 and 2050, etc. So I have to mention is about this is a, 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 a big project in, co in collaboration with Hospital Authority and also EMSD. So it is the first commercial viable or combined heat and power project in Hong Kong. And also it can be one of the lowest carbon emission projects in the world. Why we mentioned that is that landfill gas, actually we got the uh, verification from Hong Kong PC that it is actually biogenic. It is actually carbon neutral. When we use the carbon neutral energy to this combined heat and power project, that, well, we use the landfill gas to generate electricity. In general, for when you generate electricity, 
the power efficiency is about 50 to 60 percent is uh, the most when you come to the power plant. But for this one, because we make use of the waste heat to generate steam, hot water, etc. So our efficiency can be as high as 87 percent. So you have the same energy input but much higher energy output for this. We are able to reduce about 40, 45,000 tons of uh, CO2 per year. So this is a, a very good project. And, and, and actually, well, say, uh, in the nearby, there's also two ho uh, hospitals. One is uh, Taipo Hospital, and then in, in Lofton Park, there's another boat. So we are actively discussing with them whether we have, well, have a similar project, this kind of green project over there. So this is, um, uh, uh, is uh, 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 another waste to energy project is in, in sand area. So uh, before 2017, when you go there, there's actually two chimneys that's burning flare off the landfill gas. Because this kind of landfill gas, if you have surface, it just flare off and there's no use at all. That's, you have wasting a lot of this kind of valuable energy in Hong Kong. So that's why in here we will say in, uh, in, in we have a 20 years contract with Sand that we invest about uh, 350 million on this particular project. Well, we have a, a gas treatment plant over here. If we convert to what we call the synthetic natural gas, and after the gas production, so we have a 12 kilometer pipeline from here back to well one of our off-tech station, gas station. So we have an injector to inject this kind of small amount of uh, 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 synthetic natural gas back to our gas level and then supply to our, our, to our customer in Hong Kong. So actually here, well, we, we have another uh, 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 project, is a, a, a data center. You know, in the data center, you need a lot of uh, uh, air co conditioning. So we have used the landfill gas for the gas absorption chiller for to generate uh, the air conditioning. So for this particular project, we are able to, uh, as long as we are able to reduce about uh, 56,000 tons of CO2 per year. That is equivalent to the plantation of about 2.4 million trees. So we are talking a lot a project that is happening in Hong Kong. So how about in mainland China, especially actually for tank gas, we have a, what we call a new energy business, what we call the ECO. It's found in, two, uh, in, in year 2000. So our purpose is to convert what we call the waste and low value feedstock to what we call the high value clean fuel and chemical, etc. So I'm going to share is about this particular project, what we call the HVO, the second generation biodiesel. So I think for the people in Hong Kong, you understand that we have uh, two biodiesel plants in Hong Kong. One is in Zhang Guan Ou and one is in uh, Eco Park, etc. This is called, called the first generation biodiesel. And for this particular one is what we call the second generation. And I'm going to elaborate what's the difference between first and the second generation biodiesel. This is uh, what we call the innovative uh, green project. What's the feedstock? The feedstock is from palm oil residue. It's not palm oil. It's palm oil is for, well, say, for cooking or etc. It's for human consumption. But the residue, well, is in the past is well, useless. So we collect this kind of residue. And also, also, the, also so the second feedstock is uh, used for cooking oil. And we have a plant in uh, Zheng Ga Gong in, 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 in Zhangshou area that we convert this kind of uh, 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 waste into the second generation biodiesel. So actually, this is what we call biomass consumption. We, for this particular plant, we grow and capture the CO2 in the atmosphere. And then we, after this, we, uh, we can make use as a fuel, fuel source, etc. So here is uh, the, the, uh, the difference is for the first general biodiesel, you can just mix to maximum 7%. Or otherwise, uh, your, your energy is not running so good. 
And for the HVO, you can blend it to 100% because the property, etc., it is just exactly the same as diesel. And we also have some uh, 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 calculation is the GHG reduction is by, you can reduce when you compare biodiesel bio with uh, uh, diesel, you can reduce the GHG, the greenhouse gas emission by 85%. So actually, around the world, there's a lot of uh, countries that is mandatory to use this kind of biofuel, as for, especially for transportation. So especially in Europe, they, what, they have what we call the Renewable Energy Directive second, that required to use 40 percent of, uh, say, 40 uh, uh, percent uh, of biodiesel in the fuel mix. And part of it must be the second generation. So when you look at this particular property, you'll understand that for the second generation is actually uh, is very similar to the uh, diesel, etc. So um, we got the certification from this uh, ISCC. Well, we, if you want to sell the product in Europe, you must get the certification, etc. That meet the but the carbon emission requirement, etc. So we do some tests because um, last year we have a, a chance to discuss with the environment senior official from the environmental bill that, well, in Hong Kong, you know, there's, is, there's no mandatory requirement for biodiesel at this moment. Why? Because there's a, a, a research in year 2000 from a, a Hong Kong U professor that if you use the first generation biodiesel, the NOx level will go up by 9%. So in the world side, if you get the NOx emission higher, then it will harmful to the, to the, to the public, etc. So when you, and actually about uh, uh, two, two or three months ago, we have a pilot project with Hong Kong U and VTC. We have a pilot project. We use four diesel vehicles from town gas. And actually for the second bio generation biodiesel, we, we call that the, the CO2, CO level reduced by 40%. The, the HG reduced by 30%, and most important is the NOx level. Instead of going up, it's going down by 6 to 16%. So we are going to uh, apply a ECF fund to have a more detailed project on this. So in case of Hong Kong, when we back to Hong Kong, in case we have a mandatory requirement, say just for, for just 5% of biodiesel for, 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 for road use, actually as each year we can reduce the carbon emission by one, uh, 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 180,000 tons per year. So when we go further, how about uh, airplane, jet fuel? Well, we travel a lot, isn't it? So actually our plant at, uh, at, uh, 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 in, in, in Jiangsu, is we are preparing for another version next year is to produce the biojet fuel, biojet fuel for this particular. In some country in Europe, they have a mandatory requirements for 1% of biodiesel. So if you, Hong Kong, if you just follow the same example, each year we can re reduce 220,000 tons of CO2 per year. So apart from that, uh, actually we have another project is uh, uh, in Shouzhou, is the food waste recycling plant. So it's here. And for this particular plant, each day we treat about 300 tons of uh, uh, food waste generated from, from the Shouzhou industrial area. And it generates biogas for, for, for our usage, etc. And, and also for the used cooking oil from the food waste, it can into our HVO plant nearby. So this is a picture showing the uh, food waste processing fine, and I understand that many uh, senior environmental officials, they have been there and visit, and, 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 and the uh, response is very good. And actually, the difference between Hong Kong and that in, 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 in Shouzhou area, we have our own trucks to collect the food waste. We have the measurement, etc. We know which particular restaurant was the daily amount of food waste generated. And wh whether they have properly treat their food waste, have they direct to other for other uh, improper usage, etc. So we have a very good uh, uh, data connection network. So after that, for 
actually for the biogas for this one, uh, it come to the well, it's a French uh, factory that they are able to achieve a uh, carbon neutral in July this year. It is because they use of uh, the biogas from our food waste processing plant and feed it to what we call the CHP plant to generate steam and also electricity and together with the solar panel so that they can achieve the uh, carbon neutral in their plant. And apart from that, we are also, well, say, have a uh, building a plant is in yard waste. You, you know, in Sojiao, there's a lot of yard waste generation from there. So we can use this type of what we call the carbon neutral uh, uh, fuel source for, for our purpose. So apart from that, also, we are looking for is what we call a biodiesel. Actually, there is a bioethanol, gasoline. So we are building two plants in in northern part of China, and that will be, well, say, commissioned for uh, uh, next month and, uh, and also end of next year to convert the agricultural waste to this kind of bioethanol. Uh, for the solar panel, so uh, we, 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 of course, we support uh, uh, this kind of project in Hong Kong. So actually, we, uh, well, we have uh, uh, go, uh, is installing the solar panel in our uh, North Point headquarters in our uh, gas production plant and optic station, etc. So we expect uh, each year we generate about 300,000 kilowatts of uh, 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 energy, uh, part, uh, uh, electricity, and the uh, uh, estimated uh, value is about 1 million. So the paper is, not, is very good. So apart from that, we have also uh, what we call, it's not uh, below energy, but we will call it distribution energy system, just like the CHG plant we're talking about in that show. Because we think that if you have a high energy efficiency, it will be much better. So this one is that we have the, this project is that we send the gas there and generate the electricity and we make use of basis for space heating, hot water, and also uh, in case sometime we convert to back to cooling, is air conditioning, etc. The efficiency is uh, well enhanced by 50 to 70 percent. So this is very, I think, is a very good project to enhance the efficiency, etc. So we expect that well uh, in 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 year 2022 we are about 60 projects in mainland China. So another one is that we mentioned that in, in, in mainland China, there is what we call the uh, national <coughs> carbon emission trading. If you can reduce your carbon emission, then you may sell it uh, to, to, to other parties, etc. So I think it's a good idea because in Hong Kong, when we talk about the landfill gas, etc., when we send this kind of gas, well, well we, we are able to reduce the carbon emission, but we cannot sell the credit. So we support the Hong Kong PC to carry out this kind of the Hong Kong blockchain carbon emission trading platform. And, and, and we sponsored, expect we sponsored this particular project. We hope that in future, when the people in Hong Kong, organization in Hong Kong, etc., well, when they want to buy the carbon credit, they can buy it in Hong Kong instead of going to, well, United Nations or other parts of the world. So this is uh, something that's hope. So just make my conclusion is that we hope our town gets to, to be the Asia leading can clean energy supply and quality service provider. Thank you very much. Thank you.